Philippines accuses China of more harassment near disputed reef. The Philippines has accused China's Coast Guard of harassment, obstruction, and dangerous maneuvers against its vessels near the Second Thomas Shoal in the South China Sea. Philippine Coast Guard boats were assisting a naval operation on June 30 when they were followed, harassed, and obstructed by larger Chinese Coast Guard vessels. The incident took place near the submerged reef, which the Philippines claim sovereignty over. The Philippine military conducts regular resupply missions for the troops stationed on a grounded World War II-era American ship in the area. China claims almost the entire South China Sea, including the waters within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. The Permanent Court of Arbitration ruled in 2016 that China's claims have no basis under international law. Western allies drag Iran to uncourt over down jet. Canada, Britain, Sweden, and Ukraine have filed a case with the International Court of Justice ICJ, seeking damages from Iran for the families of the victims of the Ukraine International Airlines Flight 752, which was shot down by Tehran in 2020. The four countries are asking the ICJ to order Iran to apologize for the incident and seek compensation for material and moral damages suffered by the victims and their families. Iran admitted that its military had mistakenly targeted the Kiev-bound flight, resulting in the deaths of all 176 people on board. The ICJ statement highlighted that the countries claim Iran violated obligations under a Convention on Civil Aviation. The case seeks accountability, justice, and transparency for the victims' families. In response, Iran jailed 10 members of the armed forces involved in the incident and offered compensation, which was criticized by Ukrainian and Canadian officials as insufficient. NATO sends more warships to Baltic Sea ahead of Vilnius summit. NATO has increased its presence in the Baltic Sea ahead of the upcoming summit in Vilnius, according to the commander of the Lithuanian Navy. The Allied force, including warships from Germany, the United States, Italy, and Poland, is focused on air and maritime surveillance and interoperability. The deployment aims to prevent any unplanned or provocative actions by Russia. Ukraine, which applied for NATO membership last year, expects a clear signal of NATO's readiness to allow it to join the alliance. However, while NATO's door remains open for Ukraine, no official invitation is expected yet. Western countries may propose a security model similar to Israel's. Offering advanced weapons and technology to Ukraine as a stepping stone to eventual NATO membership. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has stated that he sees no reason to attend the summit if NATO membership is not on the table and has called for Ukraine's invitation to NATO. Mercenary warlord Prigazin breaks silence following Belarus exile in message to Russian people, report. Russian mercenary leader Yevgeny Prigazin, also known as the warlord turned rebel, has called on the Russian public to join the Wagner Group in recruiting troops for the war in Ukraine. This move would violate his exile and truce agreement with the Kremlin. Prigazin's message, allegedly posted on a pro-Wagner Telegram channel, expressed the need for support and hinted at upcoming victories. Prigazin's previous attempt to challenge Russian President Vladimir Putin's regime with a mercenary force ended abruptly, leading to his exile in Belarus. Reports suggest that he returned to Russia to reclaim confiscated weapons and received significant funds and a gift from the Russian defense minister. Prigazin closed down his media holdings and Wagner is reportedly recruiting new members, emphasizing their independence from the Russian defense ministry. Satellite images indicate that Wagner is building a new military base near Minsk, Belarus. Putin has given the Wagner fighters options to move to Belarus, join the Russian military, or return home. India increases Africa lending in race to counter China. India has become the second largest provider of credit to Africa, after China, as it seeks to expand its influence on the continent. Over the past decade, India extended about $12 billion in credit to 42 African nations, accounting for 38% of its total credit extended. India has opened 195 project-based lines of credit in Africa, three times the number in its own region. These credits have been utilized for projects in healthcare, infrastructure, agriculture, and irrigation. Despite China's larger loans to Africa, India is making efforts to boost economic and diplomatic links with the continent, establishing new embassies and consulates and hosting African countries for summits. India's engagement in Africa spans various sectors, including energy, transportation, social housing, water, healthcare, and defense. Xi's metal curbs risk backfiring as G7 seeks China alternative. 
China's recent decision to implement an export licensing system for gallium and germanium, key metals used in chip manufacturing, indicates its ability to retaliate against the US, Japan, and Europe for cutting off its access to advanced technology. However, this move risks backfiring, as it may incentivize countries to reduce their reliance on China and seek alternative sources. Previous attempts by China to restrict the sale of rare earths have resulted in diminished market share, as other countries have sought alternative supply chains. While China currently dominates global production of gallium and germanium, its market dominance could be further reduced if export restrictions persist. The new export controls may also accelerate the trend of supply chain diversification, as foreign manufacturers seek to shift production away from China. The move raises concerns in Europe about potential disruption to supply chains and may spur discussions on reducing reliance on China. Ultimately, China risks undermining its own goals of technological dominance and global supply chain integration by resorting to reciprocal actions. Indonesian President in Papua New Guinea for Talks on Border, Trade Indonesian President Joko Widodo visited Papua New Guinea to meet with Prime Minister James Marape, joining other world leaders in seeking influence in the strategically important region. The focus of their talks was on a border agreement and trade. Papua New Guinea, which has strong ties with China, previously signed a defense cooperation agreement with the US. The visit aimed to boost business opportunities and strengthen diplomatic relations between the two nations. Agreements were reached on customs, combating transnational crime, and reviewing border arrangements. Indonesia also pledged to sponsor 2,000 PNG students to study in its universities and provide funding for Port Moresby's hospital. The leaders emphasized the economic potential of their countries and the positive impact of collaboration on the region. U.S. Navy stops Iran from seizing two oil tankers in Gulf of Oman. The U.S. Navy successfully prevented Iran from seizing two commercial tankers in the Gulf of Oman. The first seizure attempt on an oil tanker was thwarted by the arrival of the USS McFall, while the second attack on a crude carrier was met with Iranian naval gunfire. The USS McFall responded swiftly, causing the Iranian vessel to flee the scene. Despite rounds hitting the ship's hull, there were no casualties or significant damage. Iran's navy has become increasingly aggressive in the region, having attacked or seized around 20 merchant ships since 2021. The U.S. has strengthened its presence in the Strait of Hormuz to deter threats and protect commercial shipping. Iran denied attempting to seize the tankers, but experts view the U.S. response as a successful demonstration of resolve. China hosts Russian warships that passed by Taiwan, Japan. China hosted two Russian warships, Gromki and Sabersheny, that sailed past Taiwan and Japan, demonstrating the ongoing military cooperation between the two countries. The frigates, belonging to Russia's Pacific Fleet, arrived in Shanghai and are expected to conduct joint naval drills with the Chinese Navy during their week-long visit. The visit comes after President Xi Jinping's meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin in March, where they emphasized stronger military ties and criticized Western interference. China and Russia have been deepening their military cooperation through various meetings and consultations, with a focus on expanding their partnership. Dramatic video released of Russian fighter jets harassing U.S. drones over Syria. The U.S. military released video footage showing Russian fighter jets harassing American military drones over eastern Syria during a mission against the Islamic State group. The encounter was labeled as unsafe and unprofessional behavior by the U.S. Air Force General in the Middle East. The incident involved Russian Su-35 jets dropping parachuted flares in front of the drones and one of the jets using afterburners in close proximity to one of the drones. The US has criticized Russia for carrying out provocative flights over eastern Syria, and this encounter further heightens tensions. The US called on Russia to see such behavior and adhere to professional standards to ensure the safety of both US and Russian forces.